Hello friends, welcome. Welcome to this presentation from Rising Power. I'm your friend, your host Roy. Today we are talking about series 1, where we are discussing real numbers. This is episode number 8. Today's topic is, what do we mean by fundamental theorem of arithmetic? So friends, let's get started. We begin the conversation by talking about what are prime numbers and composite numbers. This concept of prime numbers and composite numbers is not new for any one of you. Now here I have written number 1 through 20. I am taking a very small set of natural numbers. This really is applicable to all natural numbers all the way till infinity. Now let's take a look at each of these numbers. Now we know for the moment we will ignore 1 because 1 is a special number. Let's start with 2. I can write 2 as 2 can be written as 2 times 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. Similarly, I can write 3 as 3 times 1. I can write 4 as 4 times 1. But I can also write 4 as 2 times 2. So, if you notice, the number 2 can be only expressed as the number 2 itself multiplied by 1. Is there any other way I can write 2 as product of two numbers? Answer is no. Similarly for 3, 3 can be only expressed as 3 times 3. There is no other way I can write 3 as product of two numbers. But when it comes to 4, I can write this as either 1 times 4, or 4 times 1, or 2 times 2. So you know from my earlier classes that each one of these are called factors of the number. So let me highlight. So this number, number 2, number 3. These numbers have factors as the number itself, so in this case 2 or in this case 3, the number itself and the number 1. And we know that these numbers are called prime numbers. That is prime numbers are such numbers where they have factors only the number itself and the number 1. However, the number 4 has factors, the number 4 itself, 1 and also 2. So, Similarly, if you look at it, so let's let's write a few more. 5 can be written as 5 times 1. Again, we cannot express 5 in any other way. What about the number 6? I can write 6 as 6 times 1. Or I can write this as 2 times 3. Because 2 times 3 is also 6. So here, 5 is again a prime number because it can be expressed as only the product of the number itself and 1, so only two factors. Whereas number 6 is not a prime number because I can have 6, 1, 2 and 3, they are all factors of number 6. And we know that these numbers, which is number 4 and number 6, they are examples of what we call composite numbers. That is numbers that have more than two numbers, that is number itself and one, as their factors, right? So I think let's randomly pick maybe a few other numbers. We would not want to go through each one of them. Let's say number 10. What about number 10? So if I have 10, I can write clearly 10 as 10 times 1, because every number you can write it as the number itself times 1. But I can also write 10 as 2 times 5. So by our definition, this is a composite number, right? Let's keep composite numbers in circles. What about, I think we uh, we are picking random numbers, in, in not in any order. So let's say number 12. So if you take a look at number 12, we know that for any even number, 2 is a factor, right? So we can clearly write this as 6 times 2. So in this case, you know, both 2 and 6 are factors. I can actually break 6 as 2 times 3 times 2. So if we, if we were talking about number 12, 2 is a factor, 3 is a factor, 6 is a factor, and obviously number 12 and 1, they are all factors. So again, another example of composite numbers. So I think what we are trying to look at here is, if we look at all numbers, that is, if you look at all natural numbers, right? If you look at that entire set of natural numbers, which is really, you know, that extends to infinity, we are noticing that there are only two types of numbers. There are numbers which are prime, 
That is, they have factors only as the number itself and number one. And then you have these composite numbers where I can break the composite numbers into product of prime numbers. So like in this case, I can break the numbers uh, 12 as like this. In this case, I can break number 6 as like this. Meaning these composite numbers have not only the factors themselves and 1, but also can be broken down as product of prime numbers. Now, let's take a look at let's take a look at a, let's do a different experiment here we start with prime numbers this time so again we go back to our original set set of collection of uh, numbers 1 through 20 and what we will do is now we are going to take out all the composite numbers so we are left with 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 and like i said earlier you know the set of prime numbers really this can extend till infinity because there are infinite prime numbers. So, but we're going to start with this. And now what we are going to do is, I'm going to give you a simple rule, which is you can take any prime numbers, you can repeat prime numbers and multiply them. So what type of numbers do we find? So in this experiment that we're trying to do, where we start out with prime numbers. So let's do this. Let's take two and three and we multiply them. So I take two times three. So what do I get? I get number 6. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, what if I take 2 times 5? If I take 2 times 5, then what do I get? I have 10. If I take similarly 2 times 11, let's do 2 times 11, then I get 22. So I'm just randomly picking some numbers from this collection. Uh, how about if I do 3 times uh, 13? So if I do 3 times 13, then I'm getting the number 39. 13 3s are 39. If I do 3 times 17, 3 times 17, I get 51, right? Similarly, if I do uh, 5 times 11, 5 times 11, I get 55. So what I'm noticing is that if I take, if I take a set of collection of some prime numbers, and if I just multiply them, you know, by, you know, with each other, I get, you know, a whole collection of new numbers, right? These are all new numbers that I'm getting, I'm continuously creating by just multiplying these prime numbers, right? And we can, and the rule says you can take any prime numbers and multiply them and you can also repeat them. We have not taken a look at the repeat part just yet. And then we multiply and what do we get? Similarly, let's do one thing. Let's expand this a little bit more. And this time we will use the, the we will repeat the prime numbers. So let's take two. And then let's repeat, like, let's take 2, 2, and 3. So here I am taking the number 2, 2 times. So what do I have? So I have 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. Then let's say we want to repeat the number 2, 3 times. And I multiply that with 5. So what do I get then? So I get, so 2, 2 is a 4, 2 is a 8, 5 is a 40. Similarly, if I take the number 3 and I repeat it two times and I then multiply that with, let's say, 7. So what do I get then? So 3, 3 is a 9, 7 is a 63. So if I were to take the number 11, I'm just randomly taking some numbers and let's repeat it two times and let's multiply that with the number 3. So what will I get? I'll have 11, 11 is a 121 times 3, which is going to be equal to 3, 6, 3. I can take the number 11, right? And remember, I can take any combination. I don't have to just take two numbers like 2 and 3 or 2 and 5 or 2 and 7. I can take 11, let's say, two times 
and I multiply that with 2 and I multiply that with 5. So if I do this, then what do I get? So I have 121 times 10 and I get 1, 2, 1, 0. So I, I think, friends, you're getting the idea that if I keep on doing this, that is, if I just start out with a collection of prime numbers and I take any of the prime numbers, as many as I want, and if I also repeat them and then multiply them with each other, I'm going to get a enormous, enormous collection of numbers. And if you keep doing this infinitely, guess what will happen? You are eventually going to get the same set of all natural numbers. That is every number which is in the natural number collection, that is number one through infinity. If you keep taking different prime numbers and even if you repeat them and keep multiplying, you are going to basically get all of the natural numbers. So essentially, if you combine those, if you combine these numbers and the prime number, then you will get the entire collection of natural numbers. So friends, this is very unique because this is what is called as the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So what it officially states is something like this. Any composite number, any composite number, remember we talked about the natural numbers have obviously the special uh, number number one, then you have prime numbers and composite numbers. So any composite number can be expressed as product of primes in one and only one unique way. That is if we do not take the order in which the primes appear. In other words, if we have something like this, if we take any composite number number x here, this is a composite number. We can write it as P1 times P2 times P3 times dot 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 till Pn, where all of them are all prime numbers. So this is very, very remarkable because I think, so what it essentially means is this, right? So if we have, uh, let's say, if we have uh, any numbers in number 20, we know it is a composite number we can write 20 as 2 times 10. We can write 10 as 2 times 5. So I can write the number 20 as 2 times 2 times 5. Right? Or in other words, I can say this is like 2, the, two to the power 2 times 5. So here, what the fundamental theorem of arithmetic is stating is that this composite number 20 can be expressed as product of prime numbers, number 2 and number 5, and 2 appears 2 times and 5, and this is the only possible combination of representing number 20, meaning you cannot represent number 20 as a product of primes in any other way. Meaning I cannot write, let's say, 3 times something, right, maybe 7, and that will be equal to number 20. No. To write number 20 as a product of prime numbers, this is the only possible way. So there is only one unique way in which a composite number can be expressed as product of prime numbers. Yes, I mean, you could have said that, well, I can write the number 20, you know, instead of saying 2 squared times 5, I, what about if I say 5 times 2 squared? And that is what it says, that unless, you know, we are not really concerned about the order, whether the, the 2 appears first or the 5 appears first. It is convention to basically write the, the, prod, the prime numbers in ascending order. So, for example, as long as, you know, we don't really worry about which prime number comes first, there is only one unique way to express each of the composite number as product of primes. So, essentially, there are just two takeaways. One is that every single composite number 
can indeed be expressed as product of prime numbers and that there is one and only one unique way to express a composite number as product of its prime. So friends, in the next video, we're going to start taking a look at some of the applications of this very important fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Thanks for watching.